going on? Charles Botenston here. We are going to be doing a lifestyling number two. This time is actually going to be, obviously, it's not recorded live, but in the future, we're going to record this live. It's probably going to be on Mondays at 12. You guys are going to be able to email in your questions or tweet or whatever the way it is. Uh, Tuesday, we're going to be doing a real estate show. Obviously, that's on the real estate channel. And then Wednesday, but it's all going to be live. Like I love live. It's easier to interact. It's one-on-one. -on -one. You can ask and answer and have follow-up questions. So instead of me just talking on a Saturday at 12.32 p.m., obviously, instead of a.m., if it was this light out, that would be amazing. So today, we're first going to talk about uh, what Charles goes through on a week and maybe some things that you guys obviously have questions about. So number one is um, getting into a funk. So getting into a funk usually starts when you're sick or you're on vacation or anytime you have like time off or time away from working, you usually get into a funk. And that funk is like, could be something smaller. You just went through a breakup and then you're like, you kind of become like a homebody. You don't really go out or you don't really go to the gym. And then you start getting into this downward spiral and things that were easy, things like, you know, hanging out with your friends or going to the gym or eating well becomes a challenge and you start questioning it and you say like, why am I not eating right? Or why am I, why do I not want to go out with my friends on the weekend? And that was this week. It started on Thursday and Friday. So Thursday and Friday of this week. And essentially it was tough because not tough like, ooh, Charles, feel bad for Charles, but it's, it's tough when you get into it, how hard it is to get out of it. And that actually goes into one of the questions that I recently received, which was, how do you stop overthinking? I'm here on a weekend. I didn't want to come into work, but I knew I had to shoot this video. I knew that I needed to get out of my apartment. I needed to um, get some exercise under my belt because I didn't exercise Thursday. I didn't exercise Friday and I didn't exercise Saturday, which is like insane to me. I like, I literally have like a built up of just like aggression if I don't do something. Like I, 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 it's funny. I was actually just thinking this. I might be the only person in the world. Well, probably not. Definitely not. Is when, so when I'm out, I like EDM house music. When I'm at my apartment, I like pumping up music like metal or rock from the 80s, 90s, probably 90s, you know, Nirvana, Metallica, Limp Bizkit, you know, Linkin Park, things like that. And it really gets me like, oh, like pumped up. And it was the first time that I just, I just went nuts. I just, I was just like, ah, and you're just letting out all this steam because it's, it's steam because you weren't as active as you wanted to be. And then it's also steam, letting out steam of just frustration and frustration of just be, knowing what you should be doing and just not executing or not doing it. And I, even coming here today, I, I just had every excuse in the book. Well, I could come here tomorrow, which is a Sunday. I could do it. Da, da, da. Uh, yeah, you know what? Eating well. So I said, you know what? I'm not going to eat breakfast because I ate like crap the last two days. And I didn't exercise. So I don't want this. I don't want it to slow down my following week. So that's really my thinking. It's not really like today or the past. But I know that if I miss the gym or I, or I miss eating well, for even a day, I feel sluggish the following day, like real hardcore sluggish. If I miss it for a weekend, like two days, I'm a total disaster on Monday's gym class because I always go to classes. Uh, working out by myself, it's great. I just, it's strength training. Honestly, I'd rather just sweat all the crap out. I'd rather just feel good about myself, get the endorphins flowing. That's just my body style, my body type. Uh, and also how I want to actually just go into the day because if I don't have a good sweat and I just like lift weight, I feel like I didn't do enough. You know, even 45 minutes of like hardcore pumping iron, I'm like, I'm either not lifting enough weights or I, whatever the case is. But today you're going to fall into this trap. You might be in this trap. The biggest thing is action and it's so hard, but this is what I said. I said, you know what? all right, I have to go there today. It's because on Monday, I don't want to feel sluggish because if I waited till tomorrow, I guarantee I would have an excuse not to film this video and I would have an excuse not to be coming to work and doing work that I need to be doing for work. So that's why I came today. But when I was at my apartment, I said, all right, let's put on some good tunes. Boom, Alexa, play 
I think I said Lincoln Park. Lincoln Park comes on, Alexa, play Metallica. But there's like a station. Metallica comes on, the same song, I think it's, it's called Enter Sandman that, uh, what's his name used to come out to? Gotta get, I, 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 literally the smallest things of just like moving around was like big. Because I was working at home like through the rest of today and last night, I didn't go out last night, which is a Friday night, which is tough because you say you want a girlfriend or I don't really want a girlfriend, but you say you want to be dating a higher pool of women or a better quality guy if you're into that. And the thing is, you're not actually taking action to it. So it's like, do your actions meet your words? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. I should stay in and girls should just flock to me. Girls should just be like, oh yeah, of course, yeah. Charles is staying in, he's not taking action. He's my type of guy. So it's like, I have these, these words, but my actions are not leading up to it. So that, that's why this is called life styling, okay? You're styling your life around, that's good by the way, I just thought of that. You're styling your life around what, what priorities you have, okay? So right now, health is a priority and Definitely work, work and wealth are a priority right now. I'm 32, this is like my 10 years that I need to be creating something. So that's my priority. I've put on the back burner relationships. So, but the, but the thing is recently I said, you know what, I can't. I can't like sustain health and work but not have the relationships that I want because I don't wanna go into the winter or into the spring or whenever you're watching this, I don't wanna go into the next season of just like not taking the action I need to get to the result I want, which is a higher quality girl. I moved into a beautiful area in Manhattan. Like there's beautiful women everywhere and I talk to them and I always have this excuse like, oh, she's not really my type. Like bullshit, Charles. Like let's just call it how it is. So when you get into a funk, it could be anything. It could be like uh, money, your health, relationships, Maybe you already have a job, but you don't like it. Or maybe you're going to the gym, but you're stagnant at, a, at the gym. Or maybe you're already in a relationship, but you just don't like the relationship, or you're not happy in the relationship, or you're not having any sex in the relationship. Or you're just, you say, maybe I deserve better. That was what I always said in my past relationships because I'm on a trajectory of always growing. I'm on, on a trajectory of, by the way, I just picked up uh, Principles by Ray Dalio. Great book, very, very detailed, very detailed, very, very high level. Um, it's, it's, you pretty much like in, it's a slow read. I, I, I actually, what I do is I download uh, or I listen on audible and I have the physical book. So someone reading it to me reads a lot faster than I do. Like that's like, I'm fine with that as a weakness. Like I don't really care. Like there's always going to be a weakness. That's my weakness is that I read really freaking slow. If it's complicated material or something that I've never read before. So going back to getting out of a funk is that the smallest thing of just the action, the smallest action of just getting up, opening the window, going outside, grabbing a coffee, smiling, putting on music, and just having that as step-by-step -step instead of the ultimate goal of biking from downtown to midtown, which is today, biking from downtown to midtown, there's gonna be traffic, there's a parade, Korean day parade, and getting to work, like that's the ultimate goal and filming this. But if you have that as the ultimate goal, you'll never get started. It's like, you're, you're, say you're, you're 15, 20 pounds overweight or 100 pounds overweight and you see yourself as the ideal self, you're never gonna start if you see it as this impossible like imagination. You know, they always say the smallest thing. And with me is that I have an addictive personality both ways. And be, be careful of obviously what you say, like even me saying that, like I don't even want to say that because then I convince myself that I do. And when I do, I get into an addictive personality going the other way, which is I need to read more. I, I need to learn more. I need to, no, 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 Charles, Charles, you've been doing this for 10, 10, 11 years. You need to be taking action. So number one is how to get out of a funk is the smallest action you could take standing up, turning on the music, like I just said, all those other things, step by step, getting into the shower, turning the music louder, now you're getting pumped up. Then I started like just really just getting into it, like into the day and just letting out all the frustration, all the, all this, all the, all the 48 hours. And that's the thing is that I used to have 
months or even years of funks, like a, an entire year. So now, as you keep on going down this path of lifestyle and where you style your life around your priorities, you start bringing down your bad habits to 48 hours. Like if I could have done that five years ago or six years ago, like I remember hearing uh, Tony Robbins saying, he, you know, someone said, how do you get over a, a, something really bad happens, a death, a divorce, a bankruptcy. And he said, I literally just get really frustrated for five minutes and then I end it. And I'm sitting there, I'm like, that's insane, by the way. Like someone dies. But the thing is, it's not the death. It's the meaning that the death has on us and what we should do about it, about that meaning. I call you a, an idiot. It's not that, like if someone calls me an idiot, I would have believed that and felt bad when I was 17 because I believed I was an idiot. If someone calls me, dude, you're not even in shape. I would, I would be like, yeah, like there's levels of my in-shapeness, but I definitely, here's an insecurity is they're like, dude, like where, where's, where's the relationship? You know, like that's an insecurity right now because that's not really a priority. So really you, you feel bad and I'll get into something really big right after this that I just like, I just, I forgot where I heard it or I read it. It might've been in, it might've been in Think and Grow Rich. Yeah, it might've been in Think and Grow Rich. I don't even know what I was just gonna say, but let's just talk about that, which is, okay, so actually, no, let's go back to that. My insecurity was, or is, I don't even wanna say that out loud because then I start believing it and that's the subconscious mind, you know, back here. You know, this is really, this is really the, the earliest mind that we have. So for me, if someone said, because in college and high school, someone said, dude, you don't even have your relations, relationships sorted out. That was my priority. I loved going out. I loved partying. I loved my friends. I loved, I loved girls. And that was like, I was like, no, I'm pretty set right now. But like, they weren't like the, the high quality, you know, it's like college girls, like you don't really care. Or like even right after that, you're like 23, 24. And by the way, girls that are watching this, guys are at least three to four years behind your maturity level. So when girls were turning 30 and I was turning 30, I was really like 27 at the time. <laughs> Listen, this isn't all guys. I could tell you the majority of the guys because uh, women, they already have a time clock and they need to meet that expectation. We don't have, really have that time clock. You know, we can, you know, I was born, granted, I was probably a mistake, <laughs> but I was born, my, I think my dad was like, 42, 43, or even older. My mom was like 40. And they were probably like right after a wedding, they're like, oh yeah, let's just, and then, oh shit, we have a baby. All right, should we keep it? All right, let's just keep it. And now Charles is here and they are so glad they did. They say it the opposite, but let's be honest. So going back to uh, what I was gonna say before, we are addicted to our emotions. We are addicted to our emotions. We are addicted to the emotion of dating a girl that might be out of our league. We are addicted to that really hot guy that asked us out. We are addicted to the A that we just got on our test, the emotions of going to the gym, okay? There's good and bad addictions to the emotion. It's the emotion that alcohol gives me, which is freeness and openness and the ability to be myself. Or we literally are doing, that's the thing is that we have to remove ourselves from the emotions. Because if we see ourselves as the emotion, we're gonna get addicted to the emotion. You know, there's this whole thing of no fap. So no fap is men not pleasuring themselves and now women are getting into it and it's an addiction. And listen, you could have asked my high school self. And that's the thing is, it would have been like, you know, like, thank God I didn't have computers. I just had like uh, magazines and whatever because it would have been terrible if I was in high school now. But men are addicted to uh, not only pleasuring themselves, but gaming, not going out. Women, they might be addicted to social media or going out and just rejecting guys or being, like I was just talking to this one girl and she, she is using uh, Tinder or one of the uh, dating websites for just validation. You know, she's like, yeah, no, I'm not gonna go out with any of the guys. But she feels that every time she swipes and there's a match, that, that, that just like, it just feels good. So she's not really addicted to, and I don't, I don't look at her as like bad. 
like, yeah, you could say, oh my God, that's terrible. You're on there and you're blah, blah, blah. Okay, we can get over that. We match and nobody messages. Like, that's fine. Okay, we're all grown people here. But she's addicted to the emotion that every match that she gets is validation. What are the emotions that you're addicted to? So really the easiest way is what are three habits? This was one of the biggest benefits that I got out of principles. And, and you know, let's just go back to uh, value. People look at things and they, they're like, well, this costs, this book is $25 or $20. I'm like, yeah, but it's Ray Dalio. He has the number one hedge fund in the world. He's a billionaire and he's giving us his principles for $25. Yes, please. So in there, so that's, that's value. I look at the value. I don't look at the cost. I look at it like I just read finally for the first time. I can't believe people were always talking about this. I was like, what are you talking about? So they're always talking about uh, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. And I was like, eh, it's probably going to be just like a very not good book about for someone that's 32. I already read a bunch of books on investing and things like that. But Rich Dad, Poor Dad brought up one thing that was incredible. Value on things that don't need to be valued. So I would always say, I need the best haircut. I need the best suit. I need, uh, you know, the best computer, you know? And like the computers nowadays, I don't need that because I'm not doing editing. I'm not doing animation. I'm not doing illustration on it. So my job is not the speed of my computer. My job is, is how many phone calls I make. So like maybe it's my cell reception within the office environment that I rent. Like that, that might be a good, you know, area to start, but people put too much value on things that are not valuable. And I did that. I did that because I didn't really grow up with a lot of money. Like, no, I wasn't poor. I'm saying like people were growing up and they had all this shit at like the coolest birthday parties, like the, like everything that as a kid, you're like, I want that. Like that car. I never had a car growing up. Like, yeah, I borrowed my parents. But what I didn't know and what I do know now is that they were instilling things that I had no idea, things that you can't feel and touch, hard work, humility, confidence to do what you want to do without my parents saying, you know what, you shouldn't do that because we don't want you to do that. You know how many parents are out there? They're going with the validation. I heard this from Bill Burr. He goes, you know how many people have the validation of putting a bumper sticker on their car that says, my kid is a straight A student. It's like, okay, cool. Is that the validation for the student or for yourself? That you need that reassurance that you're a good parent? It's, it, you know, and it's one of those things like, okay, that's cool, but where is the place that it's coming from? You know, why, Charles, why are you buying this suit? Is it because you didn't grow up with brand new beautiful suits that you had hand-me-downs and you're trying to make up for this insecurity when you're younger? Yeah, that was actually it, number one. Number two is, when I'm actually looking further to the future, I say, does this suit mean anything or can I get something a little bit less? I know that books, the value of books are my gateway out of my mentality that I used to have. Number two in the book from principles is curiosity. You have to be curious. You have to be op open-minded to everything. If you're a Republican, study Democrats. If you are really rich, understand the plight of people that are not rich. If you are, I don't know, an athlete, understand where the nerd is coming from. Or if you're a nerd, study where the athlete is coming from. Is, is, we don't have an understanding of the other side because we feel that if we open our minds to a deeper understanding of the other side, and why am I saying this? Number one is if you're, everyone is in sales, you need to know empathy on the other side why someone is not buying your product or your service. Number two is negotiation. You're always going to be negotiating. You're always going to be influencing. And if you don't have those skills, you're not going to be successful. You will not be successful. Even if you create an app, you don't think Mark Zuckerberg had way too many times that he had to sell his product or his service, say, this is the future of the internet or Elon Musk selling his cars, creating a brand around something that was just implausibly incredible. Okay, so the reason I say all of this is because if you don't even have an open mind, I have such an open mind and there are way more distances that I need to go for my open-mindedness. And that is a word, by the way, 
or it's two words, open-mindedness, is that if you have an, an open mind, that's awesome, but always know that a growth mindset instead of a fixed mindset per, uh, what's her name, Carol Dweck, if you have a growth mindset, you have an open mindset. All right, so just going back to the, to the question as my computer almost shuts down, is that it's not the event that happens. It's not the event, it's the process. I already just talked about this, and it's just, it's just one of those things that it, it, everything literally comes together. Everything, as Tony Robbins said in Money Master the Game, money master the game. And when you think of life as a game, no pun intended on the actual board game, but when you think of life as an actual game, you start thinking, holy cow. So if I just wake up at this time and I put this into my body, and I'm not saying it's easy, and I just put this into my body, kombucha or a salad, and which I just had, and I make sales calls for maybe an hour a day, and I just and I meditate, there's just basic things. And that's why I brought up emotions and open-mindedness is that I had no idea that emotions controlled my life. I was not going after the feeling of relationships or a higher quality girl. I was going after maybe the insecurity that I didn't have high quality girls in high school that I really, really wanted. You know, there was always like, like not settling because the girls were great, but you always were like, yeah, but I like kind of want to date her. So it's like, am I, go, am I chasing the emotion, the emotion of insecurity from high school, number one? Or number two is, am I chasing the emotion of validation when I take a picture with her? Or she says we're dating. You know, it, it, like these are questions I don't have answered. However, these are questions you need to ask yourself. And the hardest reason that we don't actually ask ourselves these questions, or the reason we don't, or the hardest yeah, that's it. The hardest reason, the hardest reason, the, har the only reason we don't actually ask ourselves these questions is because we are so, we, our ego is so soft. When people question our ego, when, qu when people question if we're right or wrong, or our, our hard stance as a Republican or a Democrat, or as an athlete, or as a beautiful girl, or as, or as a smart, intelligent person, when someone stakes their claim and they say, you know what, you're not that smart, where does your ego go? Does your ego attach to that? Or does the open-mindedness say, please explain. Like, I, I wanna understand where you're coming from. And to be honest, this is the crazy thing is, the last year when I started to do that, I, not only do I understand people more, which is, uh, Probably one of the most confident things, you understand where they're coming from. Like you don't look at them as a label. You look at them, you don't look at them as like a, you know, words that are getting thrown around like a snowflake or on the other side, like a white supremacist. And I know I'm going political because like everyone knows those words. Or if you voted for Hillary, you're this type of person. If you voted for Trump, you're this type of person. And, and then when you start looking at the different sides, you get confidence because you understand where they're coming from. This is also in sales. When I'm calling a for sale by owner and the owner says, you know what? I don't see the value of an agent, of a real estate agent. So a for sale by owner, in case you don't know, is an owner that's selling on their own. So in other words, they, don't, they didn't hire an agent and that's the industry I'm in, is I used to get offended. I'm like, no, you do need an agent. And then I started working with bad agents and I'm like, if this is the representation, this bad agent is the representation on an owner, then this is where the owner's actually coming from, is that they've been represented poorly in the past, so they blanket the industry. So it's really not an insecurity, that's really my insecurity, because it was their only experience. Their only experience was with a bad agent. It wasn't that, she's putting it on me, that's my insecurity saying, no, we're not. We're not all bad agents. And it's the same thing with any, any type of being open-minded. So when I mean confident, I understand where they're coming from. So not only can I answer their objection, not only can I ask the right questions to convince them to either work with me or meet with me or even discuss it further. And if they wanna work with me, awesome. If they don't, awesome. Like to get to that point, is amazing. That's why I don't really put any of my politics out there. That's why I don't put out, yes, I'm a Catholic and I go to church and things like that. But like, 
I'm not like that raging, like, you need to be. And it's like, the reason being is, and by the way, I don't, I, I go to church when I'm with my parents, you know, which is really, I'm like a really bad Christian. Let's like put it out there. I'm not like going to church every single day or even every Sunday, but I, I see the, the, the morals of, go, of a religion, the morals of you should probably not kill your neighbor and you should probably not sleep with your neighbor and like basic things like that, you know, just getting along in society. But the reason that I don't like project any of my feelings except for business sense or money sense or sales or negotiating is because the other are very, uh, very bullet pointed. And you'll see that the best negotiators, they don't project their ideas, they ask questions. The best salespeople, the best influencers, the best managers, the best leaders, the best CEOs, they don't project, they ask questions and they give reasons why the company's going this direction, why the owner, I understand why owners and buyers and sellers, they don't wanna work with an agent because they probably had a bad experience just like an agent had a bad experience or salespeople, there's a big stigma behind it. So. I don't even know how we got on that topic, but I think that's really important to, to point out is because I've removed myself from projecting my points of view, it actually also removes myself from social media. Like I don't, I don't need to be on social media to, because what is it? What's social media? I post, but I don't actually scroll. Okay. I don't, I don't, I don't go through social media. I'll go through like maybe I don't even even know if it's like up to once a week now. I don't even care, to be honest. Once you remove yourself, you don't even care. Like I'll scroll maybe for 10, not even 10 minutes, like five minutes in the video section of Instagram because I really like rugby and I love seeing rugby highlights. But that's about it. I don't really care what anyone else is doing, to be honest. I really could care less what anyone else is doing because that's not, as David Data in the way of the superior man, that's not the area that I'm, I'm looking to go down. All right. So I think we're going to end it there. Subscribe to the video. Let me know your comments below. And this is obviously going to be live. I know I was all over the place, but lifestyling is just me just ranting. Yeah. I'm going to have shorter videos. That's when we have a professional out there. And, um, I don't even know how long this, this camera thing goes for, you know, wow, this is, I hope it, hope it's good. I'm looking at the, uh, the monitor. Leave your comments below, subscribe to the channel, and let me know your comments. Also, a little housekeeping, obviously, for the, uh, the vlogs. We put the vlogs back on the channel instead of a separate channel because I kind of just want to build it up, build up this channel, and pour more money into it, even though I don't make any money from it. I think in the future, I'm going to be speaking. I'm going to be able to put my speaking engagements on there. And if, if I write a book you know, in the future, like I'm going to write a book now. It's going to be free, all my principles, up until age 30, even though I'm 32. And then in the future, I'm probably going to sell the second book, but that's at age like 38. That's in many, many years or even longer to age 40, A, because I don't really like writing. <laughs> and number two is I, I don't know. I just don't want to go down the route of, you know, a Tony Robbins or a Grant Cardone or a Ty Lopez where you like, you need your audience to support you. Like I, I would love my audience. I, I, I love the, the legacy that, uh, Gary Vaynerchuk is going down, which he's more, more worried, not worried, but he's more about the path of his legacy rather than asking people for money. And I'd rather ask for people and things that I believe in. Yes, of course I believe in my things, but I'd rather ask people for, you know, services that I can render. You know, if I go to a speaking engagement, the whole audience paid me to give me, give them value. Yet I was paid by the host. Or if I write a book, you know, I want to put as much value into that book. So yeah, I don't know. Listen, that could all change. I have no idea. I don't know what the, the future holds, but that's where I'm at now. Let me know your comments. Talk to you guys soon. I'm going to record another video. I really like these long style videos. Have an awesome day. Talk to you guys soon.